Hello. Uh, welcome to Mastering Vlogging. Uh, this was meant to be with Evan Edinger, but he could not make it today. I filled in for him. Uh, my name is Evan Edinger, so a very different person, uh, different brand, old school. Uh, however, you might be wondering, who am I? Uh, I'm very much a YouTube dinosaur. I've been on the scene for about 14 years. Uh, as of March 30th uh, coming up, that will be, March 31st actually, is my 523rd consecutive Sunday upload, uh, meaning I've not missed a Sunday on YouTube uploading a video for 10 years. Sadly, I was just beat to the punch by Tom Scott like three months ago. Bless, I was caught off guard. I was like, this is my only thing. Uh, brilliant guy. Uh, I have about 750,000 subs, 100 million views over, the, over my tenure. Um, the dreaded question that I get, as many YouTubers get, uh, is, well, what do you do? Uh, people find out I make YouTube videos. What is it that you make videos on? Uh, I'm still someone that is very old school in that I just make a video on whatever I'm interested in at that moment. I'm not following any niche necessarily. So if you asked me this question like uh, a couple months ago, I'd say, oh, I made, a video, I made a video recently about why like American roundabouts are actually quite shit. Uh, but then if you ask me the next month, I'd be like, uh, Duolingo is quite good recently, but nah. And then otherwise I made a video recently about the uh, UK developers uh, for housing uh, being a bit shit. Maybe that's my channel, just this stuff shit. But I also talk about things I like as well. Like, but either way, the niche is all over the place. Um, but I've been on YouTube for so long, I've seen the rise and fall of so many different creators. Uh, people that started before me that you know, got really big but then burnt out. Uh, people that started after me that got way bigger than I ever have at this point. And yet they also um, either moved on or they burnt out. YouTube isn't necessarily for everyone, neither is vlogging. Um, to put it in perspective of the different eras of YouTube uh, and what they were like, uh, if you met me at a YouTube convention in California or Florida in 2017, uh, you do, usually if I left my hotel room, it would be met with people screaming my name, asking for photos, can I sign your arm, uh, sending videos, whereas the other day I was in Sheffield, a very hilly place. Um, there was this really long road with a hill that went down and up, and a man had recognized me a good 30 meters away and just shouted, are you Evan Edinger? Yes? What are you doing here? So, you know, different perspectives of uh, where I've been in my YouTube career. Um, now, I'm interested in, uh, you're here for a mastering vlogging uh, talk, and I have vlogging in quotes in the, the main part because I, I'm wondering if, if y'all are still actually vlogging, uh, at least in terms of the algorithm, uh, who I am friends with, the guy that makes the algorithm. He's a lovely guy, he would hate me if he found out I was referring to it as the algorithm and not the audience. So the audiences these days really aren't into vlogging as much as they used to. Uh, if you think about it, vlogging is very much video blogging. It is a very personal, personal thing. Uh, and when YouTube started, it was just personality-driven content. Uh, here's what I did during my day. Here's me walking around in a different country, vlogging. However, YouTube and audiences in general are really leaning more towards uh, content. How do you package that content? So maybe if you have an interesting day, how can you title and thumbnail that so that people are actually interested and sprinkle in a bit of that personality afterwards? Uh, vlogging is still a thing. It's not to say that there aren't really popular vloggers still, um, but you have to ask yourself, what are you here for? What, what is the vlogging to do? If it's a way to express yourself, uh, I say absolutely go for it. There's, there's nothing you can really do wrong if you're just doing it because you want to. Uh, but in this talk, to hopefully provide some use for all the different people here, because there might be people in the very beginning of the journey, people in the middle, people at the end. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about some actually useful YouTube tips, uh, camera and gear selection, uh, uh, that's good in my opinion, uh, post-production, and then I think probably the most useful will be if any of you have any specific questions that I can provide answers to, I, I would love to give those to you at the end. So, uh, useful tips. Uh, people will come to me and say, well, Evan, I wanna make videos. Uh, and my number one tip is, well, then do it. It's very blunt, but then they're like, oh, well, what do I make videos on? If you don't know what you want to make videos on, why are you asking what you want to make videos on? Uh, I feel like it's a very weird question. It's like coming up to someone on the street and saying, what should I have for breakfast? Weedabix? I don't know. Uh, it, you are your own person. You've got your own life. Uh, no one really in the world has your same uh, upbringing, your exact same hobbies. Everything about you that makes you unique is what your YouTube or your vlogging could be. Uh, and so really, that's why it's a difficult question to ask someone like me, because I don't know you. Uh, you could be someone that wants to make a video on one of their hobbies. You're at a photography and video expo, so assumably you're into photography and video. Uh, you could also then say, oh, but everyone else is already doing that. We got uh, YouTube famous Nigel Danson just gave a chat. I think Thomas Heaton is coming. We got uh, James uh, Coffee Man. <laughs> James Hoffman's coming as well. A lot of these people are already really entrenched in their niche. So what would really make you stand out? you aren't them. That's actually the big thing. You are someone else. You bring something new to the table and uh, that is something you should really be focusing on. Uh, if everyone just said, well, someone's already doing it, 
the world might be a better place because Facebook wouldn't exist, but case in point, MySpace already existed, Facebook now exists, there's Pinterest, is that a thing still? So basically, it doesn't really matter that other people are doing something. The thing is, why do you want to do it? You should be doing it. Uh, as a rule of thumb though, your first videos will be very awful. Uh, if they are not, I'd be very surprised. It is very much a, a, a rule of thumb. Uh, you look back at some of my older videos and they are just incredibly awful. I mean, just look at, uh, look at this guy. He's, he's pointing, the, the lighting is actually on the other side of the room from him. Uh, there is no light. He's, there's, what is it, he likes mushrooms? I don't know. Uh, but basically, <laughs> awful. I mean, especially if you compare it to the, the journey after like 14 years of figuring out how to do things. Um, but they're meant to be awful. You know, that, that is kind of <laughs> how it is in the beginning. Um, the most important tip that I can give to you though is to keep making videos. There's a reason why I have made a video every single Sunday without missing. I was making videos for about three to four years before I made that distinct decision in 2014 to not miss a single week. Not just is it that the algorithm and or audiences prefer when they have a regular scheduled content they can come back to, but from my experience through the years, your brain is so much better able to come up with creative ideas if you're juicing it regularly. If you make a video whenever you think about it, sometimes you're not going to think about it. Your video, your, I feel like my, personally my creativity isn't as flowing unless, oh shit, it's Friday, I got to make a video. Uh, and then I start coming up with ideas and then some of the videos that I come up with within a day have been my most successful ones. Uh, uh, weirdly enough, as, as I said, my videos are all over the place. My most viewed video, the day I was uploading it, I texted my then girlfriend and I said, you know, I, I don't really know what I'm doing at YouTube these days. I'm uploading a 40 minute video of me taking a maths GCSE and no one is gonna watch this. And it has 4 million views because for some reason everyone wanted to watch an American man taking a maths GCSE. You never know. Um, but to tell you a story, um, I once had a friend message me about three, four years ago on Facebook and he said, hey Evan, uh, I've just started a YouTube channel and I want your, your critique, your honest feedback. And it is part of the course when you start making videos and you start making it, uh, you will have friends reach out like, hey, remember me? Uh, but this was actually a genuine interaction. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually give him some tips. So I load up the video. Uh, this, this guy, I was a bit surprised he was making videos considering he is a PhD doctor, you know. But uh, medical advice is a good tip, uh, is a good niche to go into in YouTube. There's Dr. Mike, uh, stuff like that. So I was like, this, this, it's all right. But the video was awful, was so bad. Oh my God, there's awkward pauses in between every single cut. Uh, there was loud background music for the intro that then is just so jarring. There's a five degree incline. However, every single one of those mistakes I have also made when I started my journey. I, you know, put my camera on a stack of books with them to try and prop it up on a wallet. You, you, you do what you gotta do to get your, your content done. Um, but the number one tip that I actually gave him, not necessarily as useful considering I could have said all these things, was good, keep going. Just keep making videos. Just, uh, that was a good first one. Keep making another one. Because the next video you make, you're gonna be like, oh, I, I, I wish I wasn't so awkward in between takes cut out the breath or learn how to JL edit where the audio kind of flows in, but the video doesn't. Um, so I also did tell him just buy a tripod so that you don't have to have a slant and it's easier to shoot. I gave him all these tips, uh, waited a couple months, checked back on his channel and he actually stopped. Um, to be fair, he did make it to 10 videos before he realized it wasn't for him. And maybe it's because that was the number for him where he just felt like he wasn't getting the success he was expecting. Uh, if, you, if your metric for success on creating videos, on vlogging, on YouTube, is high views, is making that money, making that fame, hookers and blow, I don't know. If any of those things are what you're looking for, you're gonna be very disappointed because that is something that takes so much effort for 99.9% .9 of people to get to. Uh, it is a lot of the work and the slow growth to get to that point that matters. So if you use as a metric for success um, I want to be able to express myself, or I really want to share my opinion on this specific topic with people, then even if no one watches it, well, no one, you're, it's still depressing, uh, but you send it to your mom. Uh, but if, if anyone watches it and anyone has actual good feedback, that's going to feel so satisfying. So you're going to feel successful. Um, but if your question is how long until Lambo, you know, how long am I going to be making these videos until I'm able to make money? Um, I know for me personally, I think it took me, obviously it was a very long time ago, uh, but it took me nine months of making videos till I got my first paycheck, which was like $100. I was very excited. Um, and even still, and this might blow your mind, but it took me nine years until I was able to comfortably rely on YouTube income in general to live in London, which is where I live, sorry. Um, but in obviously I could make money on merch and 
I don't know, is a brand deals, NordVPN and whatever. However, in terms of just AdSense alone, which a lot of people do use as their standard metric, it did take me a full nine years to get to that point. Um, and the reason why I didn't give up seven years, six years, five years ago was because I found something that I really enjoyed doing regardless. So I know it's really wanky, but if you really want to master vlogging, you really just need to enjoy vlogging. Uh, do it for you. Uh, for me personally, I, I have a second channel where I do actual vlogs. Uh, I went to Porto recently with my girlfriend, uh, and I just p make these videos so that I can watch them. Because I am the audience member that is always going to be, I was going to say I'm always a fan, but I'm actually the most critical, so never mind. But basically just do it for you is my number one tip. In terms of camera and gear selection, uh, you might have heard it from the previous person, but the question you have to ask yourself is, do you have gas? This is a big problem with a lot of creators these days, uh, gear acquisition syndrome. You watch some video from some YouTuber that's like, you gotta get this potato, this computer, it's great, and then you get the computer, and then he's like, oh, now I need a new memory card for the computer, and now I need a new camera for, and it, it, you just keep getting gear. Uh, at the end of the day, I know this is a photography expo, but the iPhone camera these days and the Android cameras these days, they're honestly really, really great. I know that's not something you might want to hear, but for vlogging and for getting started, the best tip is to just use the camera that you know how to use. Uh, now, at the end of the day, I would still recommend getting a cheap DSLR over an iPhone. So even like, I think uh, it's called a, like a 550D was the uh, Canon one in the UK that I started out on. Cost me, I think 300 quid. It's so old now, you could probably get it for free on eBay or something. Um, but the point of that camera versus a phone is it has all the settings. I can now put everything on auto to start just to make these little vlogs, but I also have the power to learn because you can't really learn much using your iPhone. You set it, it, I mean, these days the camera does have shutter speed built in and stuff, but you just point it and you shoot. Whereas when you have a DSLR, regardless of what type it is, you actually need to learn bits to get better. So you have the ability to improve your content. You learn about the aperture, the shutter speed, and at the end of the day, it is genuinely the camera that you know how to use best is the best camera. Now, to put it in terms of vlogging, uh, I'm just going to go through, because it might be rich of you thinking, oh, look at this fancy man with his fucking 5,000 pound camera lens combo telling me to use a phone. Sure, how rich of you, Mr. Gearman. Yes, I agree, I understand. However, in terms of vlogging, let's just say I'm in Porto and I'm walking around, I'm like, oh, you know what, I'd like to vlog a bit of this day. I have two options, I can pull out this camera. Here we go, all right, hold on, hun. yeah, sorry, hold on, hold on. I pull out my camera here, all right, it's usually stuck, all right. Make sure the tripod, put it on there. All right, it's a bit too bright, so I have to twist the ND filter a bit, so hold on, I turned that on. Uh, ND filter, overexposed a bit. All right, that's good. Flip it, uh, turn off auto stabilization. Uh, shit, okay, the ISO is a bit too high. Switch that back and lock the white balance. Hey, that just took me so much time. I'm so stressed, I just wanted to vlog. Whereas if you have a phone, it is quite literally just pull it out. Not just phone, there, the DJI Osmo 3 is another good one, the Pocket, I believe it's called, uh, in terms of it's stabilized, it's got good quality. You just pull it out of your pocket. Um, I have gone through many waves from someone who just shot with whatever he had in 2014 to slowly getting to the point where I was like, I've got to have the quality. I got gas real hard. All right. I was buying all this sort of kit thinking it would make my content better. But really what mattered is what I was really ready to use and what reduced friction when I wanted to vlog. Um, these days, I actually have a mixture. I shoot on my phone. I shoot on this camera. I've actually shot on the webcam every once in a while to throw it back. Um, but as long as what you're using tells the narrative that you want to tell, that's really all that matters. Now, uh, in terms of upgrading your kit, a lot of people think they need the fancy gizmos and the lenses and the cameras, and this is a photography expo, but the microphone is the most important thing you can get for vlogging, for anything. Um, if you think about it, you would much rather sit through a video of a guy that has a static image that changes every five seconds with nice audio versus a pristine 4K HDR video where <coughs> peaking audio, awful. Just, I wouldn't put up with that. So just invest in a 20 pound microphone first when you want to upgrade and then eventually learn. Also learning is honestly the best thing out of, instead of buying things, just learn things, but learn how to light better. You can light your place without any lighting, just using natural lighting, slowly start investing. Uh, true story. I didn't, I decided I didn't want to learn when I first started. Uh, I had a tiny little student flat in Tottenham and uh, I bought the cheapest light I could get on Amazon, not realizing the cheapest light you could buy on Amazon at the time was a like construction tungsten, like it was basically a heater. It was a heat lamp 
that was, I was roasting myself like a rotisserie chicken trying to film a video that then exploded after about 20 minutes of use. Uh, so maybe don't get the cheapest light, but also maybe learn how to use the natural light rather than burning yourself. Uh, now, in terms of the camera that you do have, I would recommend just, just use what you have and learn the camera that you have. But your camera does have a limit. Uh, at one point in about 2019, I, was, I felt like I wanted to upgrade. I was like, you know, I'm thinking about getting one of those Sony mirrorless cameras. I said to my flatmate, and he said, well, Evan, for what you do, be a bit overkill. Bit rude, honestly, um, but he was right. I mean, I was just sitting down in my bedroom shooting vlogs. But at that point, I'd really maxed out the capabilities of that Canon 70D camera. 1080p, the autofocus was shite, and I just, it upset me to use. Whereas as soon as I got a newer camera, I ended up buying an a7 III, I read the manual. Read the manual. There's YouTube videos of some people where this is their niche. He went through every single part of the menu, and I was like, uh-huh, mm -hmm, I don't know what this means in Japanese, but I'm gonna go over it. And I learned everything about my camera, and then, uh, we have another nice photo here. This happened, which you might look at it and go, that was pretty good, what's wrong? It's fucking awful. The color grading is so bad. Uh, basically, because I, had, I was so comfortable with my standard shooting and vlogging on a Canon camera where everything was done automatically, as soon as I got to a more advanced one and started shooting flat, there's no color, I have to add it in post, I made mistakes. And it's embarrassing as a YouTuber because once you make a thing, it's there forever. As long as I'm not saying, hey guys, I'm an expert color grader. I did, I definitely did. But I wasn't, I was just learning. As long as you're sharing your journey, that's totally chill. Uh, for those of you wanna know what was wrong with this, well, I mean, first of all, the lighting, uh, the, the levels here, the background is more exposed than we are. So as a video editor, I'm telling my audience, check out that cool plant, don't look at us. Uh, the levels were all crushed below 75. My skin tones are just really not good. Um, but I have to make these mistakes. Also, the white balance is off. You have to make these mistakes even at this stage. At this point, I've been vlogging for seven years. And it, yeah, it's embarrassing a little bit, but also that's kind of what it's like. Whereas these days, I am proud of this shot. I mean, I'm pretty nice. Just threw lots of lights down there. I've got soft lighting on the face. I had a rim light that's right off camera hitting there. Orange, blue, splash of an aperture light and some fairy lights. It doesn't necessarily matter. But the main thing is, I am the focal point that you can see in the video. All of these are flourishes, by the way, that you get when you're stuck during lockdown as a YouTuber and you have nothing to do, so you go, I've gotta make my content better. So that is essentially what happens to me and uh, moved from this stage. Um, in terms of like actual useful information for what lenses and kit and blah, 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 like you said, it doesn't necessarily matter. But if you were to walk away from this and you were like, I wanna buy one lens, I would just recommend a 16 to 35 mil. Uh, I think Casey Neistat, myself, almost just wanted to comp compare myself to Casey Neistat all the vloggers. We basically say 16 to 35 is pretty much the most versatile lens you can make for video. Uh, personally, uh, because for instance, that's, that's this guy right here. At 16 mil, it's super wide. You can do everything. You can put, put it up like this. Everyone can see everything around you. 24 is my favorite. 24 mil prime is the main video uh, lens that I use because you still have to sit close to the camera. So it's a bit intimate and personal, but yet not too close that it distorts like at 16 mil. And then finally, uh, when you fully zoom into 35 mil, it's more presentary. So uh, for instance, if I was to stand here and present content to you, I'd want to shoot that at 35 mil because it comes off a little bit more authoritative just in the focal range. So by buying that one lens, a 16 to 35, you cover all the bases for the most part uh, until you get a little bit more fancy. And uh, I did put this on here, please just buy a tripod. Uh, if you're someone that's gonna spend a thousand pounds on a camera and a thousand pounds on a lens, and you're gonna go to Amazon Basics and put it on a plastic tripod, your camera is going to be worth the same amount as the Amazon Basics tripod when it falls. I know this from experience. I went to New Zealand, a tiny little breeze came and then poof. So don't make my mistakes or at least get insurance, which is also expensive. Just buy a nice tripod. Um, now, in terms of post-production, it honestly doesn't really matter what you're using. Um, these days, people are editing with their thumbs with TikTok. Um, I sound very dinosaur now, but using two fingers versus using 10, I don't understand how people have the time for that. It, I just don't. So in terms of using vlogging editing, uh, you got Final Cut Pro, you got DaVinci Resolve, you got Adobe Premiere Pro. These are the ones that most people that I know as other YouTubers use. Uh, Final Cut Pro, I've used for 10 years. I'm very biased towards it. It's really great, intuitive, fast, uh, magnetic timeline. It has great color grading application. Uh, cons, 
it, it doesn't have the most like cool features that the other ones may have because uh, it's Apple. And so Apple's like, what's popular 10 years ago? Let's <laughs> throw that in there. Uh, so we just got a tracking feature last year. So exciting. Premiere's had that for 10 years. Um, however, pro of this, again, you spend 300 pounds once, you own Final Cut Pro, you can edit for the rest of your life. I've been using Final Cut Pro, I totally paid for it legally initially, and I, yep. Uh, 10 years, shh, don't tell Tim Cook. 10 years, 300 pounds, that's 30 pounds a month I paid for Final Cut Pro. You move on to something like Premiere Pro, instead of 30 pounds a year, you're paying 15 pounds a month forever, goodbye. If I bought Premiere Pro 10 years ago, I would have spent 1,800 pounds for the same product, Adobe does have pros though. You can work with uh, people. If you have collaborative editing with PCs, maybe a friend of yours wants to edit a video for you and they have a PC, you can actually work together. After Effects works really well because it's also made by Adobe. Uh, if you enjoy losing hours of work because you like your program crashing, huge pro with Premiere Pro. Um, if you watch videos on Premiere Pro, there are loads of tutorials, but everyone that promotes Premiere Pro on YouTube hates it, I find it fascinating. Their views are like, yeah, sometimes it crashes. Uh, DaVinci is kind of like the best of both worlds, in my opinion. Uh, if you are starting out, it is, there's a free version. And the free version, the differences are, it, you can only export in 1080p. Pretty much, you don't really need more than that for a free application. Uh, some of the color grading tools are also locked behind, which <laughs> if you're starting out and you want to color grade, I don't know, there's other ways to hurt yourself. Um, but with DaVinci Resolve, the color grading is way better than anything else available. So if that's what you want to lean into. And also in terms of the UI, it is just as good as Final Cut. It's pretty much ripped them off over the years. So uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. You could also use iMovie, totally great. My friend Noah has more subscribers than I do, just about to hit 1 million uh, subscribers. He's been using iMovie despite me bullying him for years uh, because you know what? It gets the job done for him. He doesn't need to have a specific frame by frame editing where I'm like, at this exact millisecond, I'd like to cut because my joke stopped being funny. Whereas he's like, it's around there works for him, his audience love him. It doesn't really matter. Uh, all of these little details are fun, but aren't necessarily as important as you think they are. Uh, and now hopefully the most important part, uh, if you have any very specific questions that I can answer, I would love to answer any on anything. Uh, okay. I was gonna say, speak into my microphone. Project. Um, the mic's oh, we got a microphone. Yeah. Microphones are the most important aspect of vlogging. All right, this is proof, proof right here. Thank you. Um, oh, perfect. When you were the question was, if you're traveling, how do you deal with lighting without lugging around lots of kit? It really, once you add traveling into the mix, you begin to compromise and trade off. Uh, I have a really weird neuroticism about my main channel where I refuse to do any sort of trade offs. And so uh, when I was in Berlin for a month in October, I actually brought with me all my giant lighting and sound equipment, which was not enjoyable, uh, obviously to get through like TSA or whatever. Um, however, for most of my standard vlogging when I'm traveling, I do not have any lighting with me at all. Um, this is where normally when, I'm in, when you're in your studio, when you have full control of your lighting and everything, it's so much easier, everything's locked off. As soon as it goes into traveling, this is when I start going, well, I need to have it on auto, auto ISO, for instance. Uh, so now d d if I'm moving from an outdoor situation and indoor, the camera will intelligently know, will change the ISO which could increase some noise, but also I'm, I'm outside, I'm inside. It, it, this is, nobody cares. It, it, you're gonna be the main person that cares about the difference in quality. Um, but to answer the question, I basically don't bring any lighting. I set all of the ISO settings to uh, what is ideal for my um, codec, which is I shoot in S-Log3. So uh, that means I usually have to pump the uh, exposure levels to 1.7 above so I can color grade it back. Um, but I just set it auto and everything is good on lighting sound. In terms of sound, I have a little lapel microphone on me right now and this thing is pretty great. Uh, I think every crater under the earth has either one of those little road ones or the DJI ones. They're really great, they do the job and they're really good audio um, and they're small. So basically have different kit for when you're traveling versus when you're not, so yeah. All right, double. Oh yeah. Um, so obviously I'm a really rough person to ask because I've been in it for so long that when I recommend a camera to start out on, you're like, that camera was discontinued in 2015. 
but I still recommend it because it was great for me. And there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I started out on actually the cheapest camera I could buy at Best Buy. Uh, it shot a full HD 720p and it was awful, but it was better than a webcam. Um, in terms of the camera that I'd recommend, it depends on what you're doing. If you are going to be doing uh, sit down chats on the bed or in, in a room, uh, I, it's gonna be like, obviously creme of the crop is the a7S III, I do recommend it. It's, even though there's like newer cameras that have come out in the last three, four years, I'd have a baby with this camera, it's beautiful. Um, however, if you are just starting out, there's no reason to splash that cash. So secondhand, just buy a, as long as it's a, a DSLR, either by Nikon, Sony, uh, you got Canon, any secondhand crop sensor lens, uh, the five, uh, I think it's called the 66, the Sony line is the 6600. Uh, they have those ones. And then the Canons are the 550D. And now they're up to what, 950D? That's all you really need. It doesn't matter um, really what you're doing. You can get it cheaper secondhand, but yeah. And if you are vlogging, I haven't used one, but everyone seems to be pushing me towards the DJI Pocket Osmo because it fits in your pocket, it's stabilized. And for me, it fits that middle ground where I don't want to take the 10 minutes to take out my camera, but it's better quality than an iPhone. So yeah, any other question? So according to this guy at Sony, the only way I can update my, uh, update my camera is is literally to do it here by scanning a QR code and then I can update my camera. Um, I'm missing features. They don't let you update your Sony camera if it's on a Mac. Oh, I've just hello. got my camera back. Uh, not only have they updated my firmware, they have also cleaned the sensor. That's just a, wow, it's very nice. I've been needing to clean the sensor for a while, but the idea stresses me out of touching the camera sensor. <sighs> I just met a uh, lovely creator, uh, Tamara, who does camera reviews. I'd seen one of their videos before about the camera that I was interested in, the DJI Osmo Pocket. So that was cool, nice little chats. Now I'm gonna get a little drink and then head home. This is a bit of a weird one. Uh, <laughs> I didn't introduce it. I'll introduce it later. And so thus ends my time at the photography show. It, it was really nice. Um, just wanted to add a little tidbit that I thought was quite funny, uh, interesting. Uh, so I'm at the end thing, we're having drinks for some reason. They have cores. I, I have never actually had one, but I just tasted it, and uh, it tastes like water. So, I don't know. Why is, there? there is a good American beer out there, right? Anyway. <laughs> so, the, the head of the photography show gets up on stage, and he says he has an announcement. Everyone's like, really listening with bated breath. And he's like, guys, next year, it's gonna be at London XL. And there was such a group Birmingham groan, and one, American British man going, hell yeah, because you know what? I live in East London. That's right down the road, mate. That's great. <laughs> and he was like, listen, we understand. We love Birmingham. We're going to be in Birmingham again in two years. But we looked at the stats and it's just that like out of the 25,000 photographers and videographers that live in London, it's so hard to convince them to take a one hour train journey from Houston. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's such a London-centric thought to be like, why aren't you in London, though? And uh, so they're coming to London. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully I get to go to the, uh, the show next year. That'd be nice. Um, but it's been a good show. Uh, I'm going to head on my train back home to London, that one-hour-long train to Houston. It's not so bad. And uh, yeah, this has been an interesting one. I haven't done a vlog like this in a bit. I just wanted to record my whole thing. Sorry about the uh, camera dying. Creator, you know, sometimes you don't charge your battery before you go to a convention. It, it happens. Um, I watched a video the other day that was really good, which basically was uh, four science YouTubers at a convention. Uh, I, it was a good pun, the name of the convention. I can't remember the name of it. It was really good. It was four YouTubers I wouldn't imagine being in the same room, but it was so great. And I was like, I'm glad someone recorded this. And so I recorded this. Not quite as good, you could say. I agree. Open Sauce, that was the name of it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much for uh, checking in on me, and I hope to see you on the next one. Goodbye.